My Lord, tab number seven. If your Lordship turns to page 434, your Lordship will see, actually page 433, I'm sorry, the Lordships refer to Article 17 of the Constitution. And if your Lordship turns to page 434, their Lordships again right at the top of the page refer to Article 17, sub-Article 2 of the Constitution and point out that morality is one of its features because the word integrity means moral soundness. With great respect to that's not a major point over here, I proceed from it. My Lord, integrity in the con context of both Article 62 and Article 17 of the Constitution is not used in the sense of moral integrity. Integrity of Pakistan is not the moral integrity of Pakistan, it is the wholeness of Pakistan. A threat to the integrity of Pakistan is not a threat to the morality of Pakistan that is separately dealt with. When we talk in the context of the individual morality that he's a person, man of integrity, we mean he's a man with a good degree of morality. When we say the integrity of the country is threatened, we don't talk about the morality of the country being threatened, we talk about the wholeness of the country being sent. That's the country being threatened, that's the second meaning of the word. But my Lord, moving away from that, if your Lordship takes a look at page 435, you are saying the words integrity has been given a, a moral connotation, a, 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 a meaning which is not permissible by the English language. My Lord, yes, because the English language uses the word morality in two senses and context as your Lordship. Morality is a different word, integrity is a different, different word. word. And my Lord, you may be, you may have integrity and no morality <laughs> and probably vice versa. Yeah. I don't know. And my Lord, in some of the dictionaries, for instance, Oxford Concise uses the word integrity in both senses. Morality is the first sense and wholeness is the second. So your Lordship will always have to look at the context. Naturally, naturally. And, and when it says... In a marriage context, integrity would include morality. Morality. In a country's concept, it may not. In the country's context, when it says a threat to the integrity of Pakistan, means it's a threat to the wholeness of Pakistan. Also, we have to see the words in context, yes. interest of sovereignty or integrity, integrity. of Pakistan. Pakistan. Yes, my Lord. So the context is everything. My Lord, then when your Lordship turns to page 435, paragraph... 22, the principle of interpretation of constitution are correctly. Uh, this portion, Samula Baloch, is taking from somewhere else or it's uh, one, enumerating Lord, itself? The, the one which 434, my Lord, they refer to the earlier judgments of the Supreme Court in Muhammad Nawaz Sharif and Benazir Bhutto. Where morality was used in the context of integrity? My Lord, but there your Lordship will see if your Lordship turns to page 433. Ji. These last two lines, these requirements are implicit in the expression, in the interest of the sovereignty or integrity of Pakistan. But there they don't use it in that context. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And if we move to page 435, the principle that constitution must be interpreted as a whole is correctly identified. And then if your Lordship turns to paragraph 23, a reference is made to Article 17 and Article 62 of the Constitution. In the last lines, your Lordship will see that there's a reference to the Islamic values in society. And if your Lordship turns to page 436, in the middle of the opening paragraph of 436, where a declaration made by a court of law against a candidate for election warrants a conclusion of his misrepresentation, dishonesty, breach of trust, fraud, cheating, lack of fiduciary duty, conflict of interest, deception, dishonest, misappropriation to be derived from such a verdict, then it stands to reason that the consequential incapacity imposed upon the candidate for election should last for as long as the declaration is in force. This result follows as a rational consequence of the judicial declaration and 
from the lack of any time period of incapacity of the candidate being laid down in Article 62.1F of the Constitution. In other words, if the declaration by the court has attained finality, the embargo under Article 62.1F of the Constitution acquires permanent effect. The foregoing aspect of Article 62.1F of the Constitution do not encumber but regulate the fundamental right of political association in action under Article 17, Paragraph 2 of the Constitution, and then the last three lines of this paragraph. Consequently, a valid declaration by the court would involve the breach of a legal duty or obligation owed by the candidate for election to another person or the violation of the latter's legal right or privilege. Then a paragraph 25, if your lordship may see the last four lines on page 437. Because here their lordships identify what kind of declaration they are envisaging. Therefore, the consequence of permanent nature, that is incapacity, following a final and binding decree of a court of civil jurisdiction is the ordinary and lawful outcome of civil litigation.